Hello everybody, another topic, and this time a very, very important topic. Now, we have been talking about this topic for quite some time. Actually, we started this already five years ago, I think, when I worked in one of the, one of the biggest zoos in Sweden. I'm talking about negative reinforcement. A very, very contradictive topic, I'd say. Especially when you look at the different training worlds, if I'm talking about horses, dogs and so on, even elephants, even birds of prey and whatnot. Now the reason why it's a little bit contradictive is because often to apply negative reinforcement it seems to be that you have to apply a punisher. Because taking away the punisher actually reinforces the animal, which directly means you're applying negative reinforcement. Now the thing is, and I'm coming from the wild animal area, you know, the thing is that we are very busy with uh, the natural species specific behavior and so on. Very often animals are not domesticated, very wild individuals. Now, one of the first times I came up with this idea was when we started to train flight animals. So I'm talking about hoofstock species such as fallow deers, bisons, who are actually fight animals. You have animals such as bless box and so on. So basically all these antelope species, what I'm talking about. And they often, when you show up, they run away. So now we can directly say, well, when you show up and they run away, they're actually avoiding you. Well, exactly. And that's exactly it. Which directly means when I'm applying a reinforcer such as a food source, which is the number one we often go for as a reinforcer, we might now actually discuss that when we show up and we throw out a reinforcer such as a food source, while the animals are running away and not coming to that food source, this might actually not be the reinforcer we like to apply. Now we can say, yeah, Peter, you're talking about reinforcers and whatnot. It's actually not a reinforcer. And I think that's one big thing. Interestingly, if it's a reinforcer, the animal should show up. The animal should actually respond in a certain way. We discovered in this sense that when we are training these individuals, the time that we show up, they would run away. Then when the animal would look at us, we would actually go away again. And we extended that further and further till we actually could move from negative reinforcement to positive reinforcement. Interestingly, what we found that if you are showing up and the animals are running away and the animals turn around and look at you, when we are applying a food source, they still do not come to you, not whatsoever. But the moment we walk away, you directly see them going slowly towards that food source. That's basically what's happening. Which means from an observable standpoint that actually that food source I threw into the exhibit is somewhere a reinforcer which actually doesn't overpower the feeling the animal has when I'm there. They're still avoiding us. They might be afraid or whatnot, which overtakes their food drive at that moment. But when I walk away, they directly walk slowly to the place where I threw something to actually eat that up. That directly means that I can apply strategy step by step that slowly I can transfer from negative reinforcement to positive reinforcement. Now we've done the same thing in a different situation. We had two very, very aggressive tigers showing aggressive behavior. The trainer would come in and they directly would come at the fence and trying to attack the trainer. Very, very rough to see. Then the question was, all right, so, if I'm thinking about an animal that is aggressive or shown aggressive behavior, what does that animal really want? Well, very, very often it seems to be that the animal wants us to leave. When the animal wants us to leave, they're actually showing this aggressive behavior till the moment we are leaving. Now, if I'm putting this into a little bit more behavior science, for us leaving at the moment that they're on their peak aggressive behavior, we're reinforcing this aggressive behavior by leaving because we're applying a negative reinforcer which means we are leaving at the moment in time when it shows the peak aggressive behavior now what if we turn that table around what if we're saying whatever you're doing do not show this specific aggressive behavior then I will walk away so that means directly at every movement from the head to the left not focusing on me I should directly get my stuff and leave. If I do it consistently, slowly you can see that the animals become more comfortable with you being there. What they're gonna do is they calm down more because we've promised them we will leave. Now, when that's happening, I can now add a food source. I can add a primary reinforcer. 
So when I add that and then they're calm again, I go away, they start to eat. Eventually, they start to actually connect that primary food reinforcer to us as trainers. So we get that classical conditioning connected too. We're starting to build a trustable relationship. When we've done this, and this is a pretty, pretty big skill from the trainers because they slowly had to see and observe less aggressive behavior before they would walk away. Over time, and this took them about two to three months, they saw such a reduction that they could start to train them now. And the outcome was incredible. We now had animals that were focused to the trainer, that would be focused to learn new behaviors instead of being blocked because they're such in an aggressive mindset, showing us aggressive behavior. This means that very often we are using negative reinforcement in that sense. Same for cooperative care. When we are training animals for blood samples, for vaccinations and whatnot, even for chipping them, taking the needle out is actually a negative reinforcement. Now we might discuss, well, Peter, but we're training them to accept that needle. Yeah, but I am pretty sure, obviously I cannot ask the animal, but the experiences that I have is that it still seems to be uncomfortable. So how much I reinforce the animal, it is pretty uncomfortable to get the needle in there and keep it there. So take it out is actually a negative reinforcer. So I've seen this too with one of the rhinos that we started to flick its ear when the needle popped out. And we did not really understand what was happening here because we're applying a primary reinforcer for this specific individual at the right time. But still, flicking its ear was increasing. And then we started to discover, hey, wait a second. Let's start planning when we take the needle out. So when it's two, three seconds calm with its ear, we'll take the needle out and we extended that by time. The idea of applying a negative reinforcer in at this moment in combination with the primary reinforcer solved the problem and the increase of calm behavior such as a calm air to take a blood sample increased drastically. Flicking decreased only because we planned when the needle would come out and that's negative reinforcement as well. So we are able to apply these things and we're able to use this in various scenarios where we can teach our animals to work to a point where we are more focused towards them and they to us so we are building a reliable relationship thank you very much if you have any questions about negative reinforcement please let me know it's quite a topic it's a quite controversial topic but let me know your thoughts right here in the comments, all right? Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you next time in our next video. Bye-bye.